Good evening. Welcome. This is the last appointment of Design Talks for what concerns the part dedicated to design. After Luca Nicchetto, Eduardo Fioravanti, we have Sam Barn, and we really thank him for having accepted our invitation, and we're really pleased to have him here. Well, Sam Barn is a designer. He works in Italy as well. He works in Europe between Paris, Treviso, and Portugal. He will tell us exactly why he has this activity between these three countries. And uh, well, he is the responsible of the design department of Fabrica, which probably you all know is the research center and communication of Benetton. And therefore, he has a role which is very important concerning the pedagogy for teaching design. He has the uh, relationship with students and to study new collections and elaborate new concepts. Well, Sam Warren um, is working in design 360 degrees because he is not only working uh, with the product, but he also does interior design and communication. It's a vague term and we will try to understand exactly what we mean by communication here. Well, according to my point of view, it's very useful to have him here because with him we could probably speak about topics that we haven't talked about in these last previous talks in the sense all the idea of limited working to some limited editions the relationship with applied arts and the world of decoration uh, of which we uh, have talked about in design lately and we will try to understand with him the values and critical elements and issues of this dimension and many other things well his work has been documented Incredibly, he definitely does not need a further presentation. One of the last important prizes, let me just remind you in the year 2010, very important fair in France, but definitely international, dedicated to uh, appliances, home appliances. Uh, let's leave the word to him, who tells us about his world and his vision of design. Thank you. And thank you very much to the journalist that I will use as discussant. Um, because I hope we can actually create a dialogue. Good evening. Well, I am a designer, I'm French, and uh, I was born in France. I have studied five years at uh, the Fine Arts in Belletien in the center of France, and after I've done a postgraduate degree in Paris. Well, during these seven years of studies, I have also worked for different uh, design agencies to try to understand how to work and learn uh, from older people. Well, um, my idea has been that of starting as soon as possible and working for myself in the sense as a freelance, uh, finding some clients and uh, doing some small steps in order to try to create my own path. It's a work uh, which requires, according to my opinion, a lot of patience and it's pretty hard uh, to face because uh, well, at least uh, and back in my times, so let's say, if this is how I, if I can define it this way, well, there is a need of a firm that gives trust, that gives you the capacity and the ability of designing. You have to understand the responsibility that this profession contains in the sense that when you're designing an ob object you have to be pleased with what you do but you definitely have to respond to a request of a client and you definitely have to place some uh, products on the market that if they're not a glass or ceramics they need to be definitely some products that uh, remain for a very long time on earth and therefore you have to understand that what uh, uh, we're proposing to people is not only a uh, 
design and this creativity. It's a service. It's something which is uh, following up some needs, and it's a need that the market has, and therefore. Um, it's not that every single time we have to create an object that is beautiful, but they have to be a service as well. They have to be a true service, and you have to um, upstand to the money that you're paid to do this job, to open new clients, to open new markets, and respond to some true needs. And uh, I believe that uh, maybe you need to do some mistakes, uh, to do some new things, to start understanding the correct path you want to follow after that. Well, this evening I will show you a series of different projects. It's not all. Well, they are not ordered uh, chronologically. Uh, but uh, they are some projects that I believe are pretty important and relevant to explain uh, how one could be a designer. Well, this is a project done in the year 2004, when uh, after, uh, after three years being a freelance designer, I have understood that there was this research center called Fabrica, which is... Uh, going uh, by grants uh, given by Benetton, Benetton funds this, uh, and 40, 50 people are selected, uh, then uh, they are all under 25 years old, and for one year they uh, develop projects which are personal or projects for fabric, commissioned to fabric. This is called Design Slice, it's a project that Fabrica has done for both, uh, which is a ceramic uh, firm in which is located in Massano del Grappa, where there's this uh, uh, firm where everyone uh, in that area that works with the ceramics, they do a lot of uh, uh, ugly kitsch things in ceramics, and after a series of uh, firms, uh, they woke up and they said, let's try to do some things which are not kitsch, new, and they have called up a series of different designers, among which Fabrica. I uh, was, uh, when I reached Fabrica, I was the only one who had already worked with porcelain and the processing was exactly the same. Well, we go there and we visit this small brand which is family run and I see at the end of this industry some columns of plates which were not yet um, the and they say, oh, well, we want you to collect, to design a collection of bases and big pieces because doing plates or small objects, well, the people who work uh, do not make uh, a lot of attention and therefore they all break them because these humongous plates are all broken and it's piles because when you work with ceramics there's a two phases right the phase of a biscuit and the, the one which is polished and varnished which makes it, it lacquers it and makes it more resistant and therefore what is called the biscuit phase it's more fragile and therefore if a worker moves it from one place to the other they usually um, go through the risk of um, breaking and chipping and uh, therefore they, they break. So I um, went back to my office and I said, uh, well, there, what is this thing of designing another vase? Well, two or three pieces to, which make a mini collection. I'm like, okay, we can do that. But maybe we can also think um, of another way of designing, recuperating that half a semi manufactured uh, plates that have some uh, chips and they're, uh, they're broken in some way. And we can put them together to evaluate this semi manufactured product that is there to be trashed. And my idea was that of taking these plates and one you take it out of the oven well you break it you break it opposite of where there is your hand so you always break it this way because it hits against an object right and therefore the broken part is always one so I said okay fine Let, if we cut all these plates and the broken part we can create another service of plates which is made of a different plates that have nothing to deal one with the other um, besides the fact that they're all cut if the mistake in the 
broken part is a way of like a signature of processing, well then we have a recipe to recycle all those semi-manufactured pieces that were about to be thrown. So my idea was that of doing these plates, we sell plates in Five, five by five, every time they could be different, and in this, uh, the third plate is a bit baroque, and all the others are pretty plain, all belonging to different collections, and uh, the interesting part is that the only uh, similar thing is the broken uh, cut. There is the cut there. Which is painted with platinum. That is a way of um, creating this cut. Definitely, it, it, you read the function of it. See here, when you cut this bowl that looks like a half moon, well, this cut gives you this like pattern, this wave, because um, it's a plate to put some liquid or uh, like a big quantity of food. Uh, well, it needs to be definitely with uh, a uh, bowl shape. And the fact of uh, cutting these uh, plates and bolts uh, will allows you to see the function of the object. Uh, well, uh, the platinum uh, color is a way of giving, uh, um, a, I don't know, a, a preciousness to this product. And it's a way of remembering uh, classic plates, uh, the typical uh, grandmother dishes where there's always a border which is silver. And it's a way of uh, reusing some codes that usually do not work together. Thank you to the, uh, thanks to the observation and thanks to the fact that uh, um, a mistake in the production basically, well, a new project uh, turned out. So you can make some new things from what we already had. Some other plates, but we can hold well, this rather is a project that we have uh, just uh, now uh, finished for a museum of Grand Tourneau which is a, a museum which is located between uh, Lille in France and Bruxelles, Brussels. And uh, it's a museum which is an ancient industry where they produced some small bricks and uh, they've done a museum in there. And uh, we were invited by the museum because uh, they saw our projects in Fabrica and they have um, asked us to go there and do an exhibition of our products. Well, uh, Fabrica is a research center and we always try to do projects uh, that uh, open up some doors on the future. My idea has been that of thinking how we can reinvent a process in the exhibition and therefore it's always the same exact thing. Usually the curator comes to your house, basically your firm, and puts them together the way he wants and pleases and he goes on. Rather, as designers here, we need to give it further service because a designer has to respond to different matters, finding a solution to issues. Therefore, if you're working for a museum, you need to find a way of creating some things to display, right? A museum is for display. And obviously, we're not going to design some white cubes, because obviously people, other people can do that. They do it since 40 years. But I thought that rather than having someone um, come uh, from the museum and come to Fabrica, we have to go to the museum and design some more correctly and adequate uh, uh, display elements. So this meeting between and uh, kept a staff of uh, international young designers with the, a staff of the museum, which works with some very fixed uh, um, timetables and they have some fixed habits since 40 years, we need to find a meeting point. Well, this meeting point was that of asking every single person of the museum, the one who works as a doorman, all the way to the technical service, the education, administration, the directors, and so on, all these people, well, uh, a very single question, which was this. What is your favorite object?
So the mantra was, uh, what is your um, favorite object? And uh, well, uh, from what everyone said, we designed some objects. Uh, they have uh, basically told us a specific object, then I asked them exactly why that it was their favorite object. They told us why. Uh, the reasons of that choice, and we've realized that it's a very simple question. They tell you half of their life. An object could be very simple, very complex, but it basically there's a lot of empathy uh, among these objects, a lot of emotions, and a lot of personal feelings. And you realize the strength of design and how a design museum really works with an idea of asking people. Um, how do you think an object of design should be and how powerful should this be? Well, uh, from all those answers, we have used some small elements that uh, uh, could actually create an object which symbolizes all their past memories on these objects. And the, the furniture we have done allowed to present or represent the experience of these objects. Um, this uh, this thing here is a train because there's a girl who tells you about a train and for her the train is the best way and the easiest way to go to the countryside but without having a direct relationship with nature because she's a bit uh, afraid of nature. She's a very urban, very city person and after one hour out in the field she has an allergy basically reaction and therefore after a trip in a, in a train she thinks it's very pleasant and something that you can travel and emotion but it's always protecting you from the environment so you're protected by the windows so you have a contact with the not a physical one we have designed 15 different pieces of furniture and each and every one would tell you the backgrounds behind these objects in the sense that um, we put these objects our work was just that of telling the stories of these people and putting together that the role of design is also that of uh, not always uh, fixing things and putting them on just a simple table. Sometimes it's much better rather than designing a table than actually designing the object that goes on the table. Therefore, one of the objects that I appreciate the most is this piece of furniture right here. Oh, it doesn't work. Does this thing work? Stay fun. Bye. The one in the middle. Tell him to talk. Well, this is uh, a way of presenting the photo album uh, because the person who talked about this, he's a carpenter of the museum. He's a man basically who just designed some white cubes and some. Uh, like partitions uh, working there in the museum to create the various displays. Well, he said, uh, when he said a photo album, he loves to play soccer. He has been a famous soccer player, or at least uh, he was a professional soccer player, and every weekend he trains uh, small kids uh, and he's like a coach, a soccer coach. And the um, photo album is actually representing everything that he's done in his life. Uh, the, he working a lot, um, not working, being uh, so passionate with soccer, uh, he forgot that he has three daughters, he forgot that um, he had to follow their growth and uh, when someone has, uh, you know, he has a porno calendar just behind his, uh, his uh, yeah, he, a porno calendar just in his office, like in his workshop, and he says it's something super, uh, and he tells you something so intimate that he forgot about his daughters, and he's there almost crying, it, it's like incredible, I really, I feel like, oh my god, you know, and he tells you something super intimate, and probably he never told anyone this thing, and therefore, just to give. Uh, um, and create uh, like a, a true celebration to his, uh, um, I don't know, 
pride and he just um, in front of us we're just um, people he doesn't even know well and tells us all these very intimate uh, thoughts and so you can put your album of pictures there and you can hide them because his photo album is usually always on a work bookshelf right here and every week um, he and his wife open up the photo album to take a look and she tells him the things that he did not live with his daughters it's a, like a, a wonderful love story she grew the kids and uh, now he's telling him uh, well this is what happened then and you weren't there but this and this happened and uh, there is also this uh, backside of the piece of furniture that when you are uh, uh, putting all your um, clothing and put on some gym clothing and then there's a small little bench like these uh, just like the benches of a gym and therefore basically we're putting together the two ideas creating uh, some hybrids uh, relationship between all these stories they have some opposites some juxtapositions they have some very nice um, info that they're giving you and some very strong and maybe more sad and we're trying to create a piece of furniture that puts together these two things like the sports that this man really loved and his photo album so it has the library side and the more sports side that looks more like a locker room a changing room like the bench and more reminds us of a soccer like changing room so there are 15 pieces of furniture each and every one is speaking about an object and telling the story beyond the personality and the person who chose and talked about it this is um it's called color colors lecture well, Colors Collectors is a magazine edited uh, by the Benetton Group. It's 20 years, uh, they're celebrating 20 years old, and they asked me of doing a, um, an issue for the 20 years anniversary. Well, as a product designer, well, I was a bit... Uh, to the solution, you know, it's, it's something that uh, is totally different from what I usually do. And right here, just taking advantage of the, the, the 20th anniversary, I said, well, yeah, I can actually create a collector object. A collector in English has two uh, translations. Well, the uh, adjective, that it means that uh, it's, you, you do it as a, a celebration, and it's also a hobby, right? It's uh, you collect things a collector is a noun, a person, and it would play on the content and the object itself, right, using this word collector. Well, this is the number which represents all the objects that you can find in the magazine itself, because they are I can't remember how many collectors, but inside each and every one has its own collection. And the concept of collection is that of putting so many things together. So collectors are some crazy guys who just want to gather stuff and collect and collect objects. This man right here, for example, is a man who collects all objects which remind Concord. Can you hear me? We have selected these. Uh, for the, 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 you know, they're so crazy, these guys, and they're kind of funny. Concord is a very nice collection because the Concord has been a super invention of design because it's been this magic airplane that allowed you to go in New York in five hours from Europe. I can't remember after how many years the story, well, they have had some problems of uh, the, the mechanics and therefore this invention just disappeared. And this guy just collects all the things that were on the Concord from the smallest details, just like the pencil that they give you and the little notebook and the pillow and so on. This guy just uh, collects uh, 
a super invention that does not exist anymore. And therefore, this allows you to understand what the Concord experience was like. And then there's this other guy called Lamar de Clay. He's a photographer, totally crazy for um, objects which represent a symbol. If you see right here, um, a plate, there's a face of Obama. He collects all objects that allow you to do like merchandising promotion. There's this teapot with Margaret Thatcher. He loves this. He hates Margaret Thatcher, but he loves that teapot, basically. And therefore, in that teapot, she looks ugly, so he loves it. And uh, this is a way of finding people who are totally nuts. Each and every one um, is more abstract one from the other. Like this lady right here collects uh, tea bags. So basically, she has created a system to dry these small um, tea bags because well, she's English, so she's British, and therefore having a tea is definitely something a part of your life, right? And therefore, drying these tea bags is definitely a way of remembering that tea that she drank with those 15 minutes or two hours that she spent with this lady, or this other friend, or whatever. Some, I must say, they're kind of crazy, but it's fun to have these crazy people around, actually. And at the end of the magazines, there's some postcards, so you can actually start your own collection of postcards, thanks to the magazine. Well, the magazine is in a special packaging, which is numbered. And then we've done an exhibition that went in Lisbon, Paris. Um, I can't remember where, but uh, to do promotions of this uh, issue. And something which was pretty important was that the cover page is a rigid cover page. The magazine usually has a pretty soft paper, and uh, this time has a more um, a look of an object. I want this to stay in the shelves as if it's a vase. I don't know, it's just a, uh, an object that you need to collect. Another different uh, feel. It's a small hotel I've designed in Portugal, in Porto, the city of Porto, which is like a house. It has seven rooms. I've designed this in collaboration with a uh, Portuguese architect. Um, well, this is the first time I do a hotel, therefore it was a super pleasure for me, because when you design like a living space, it's not that you're designing an object which someone actually just buys it because he likes it, it has a true function, it has special need. Well, when you're designing a living space, you're designing an, an experience, you're designing and creating uh, an environment for for a person to remember the, the time he spent there. And my idea was that of saying, okay, it was in Porto. Porto is the second city in Portugal where uh, it's modern. But it has uh, its culture of artists, that there is still those old concepts uh, uh, on carrying baskets on your over your head to transport things. It's a very full and modern and it has some very small souvenir details of the culture of Portugal. The pillows are made with some fabric that we find um, in a like marketplace. The bathroom is modern, practical, and uh, functional, but the tiles are of an old traditional firm that designs tiles in a traditional manner. The space is pretty clean, pretty linear, all white. It um, allows you to feel very comfortable and at, at home, basically. It does not have some um, strong elements that could actually shock you in some way and you may not appreciate. We want to leave this space like um, give the possibility to people to spend like long periods of time there without feeling like um, annoyed where people can eat, read them. Um, there's a small detail like how to create a um, like a headrest at the end of the bed. 
And then we found uh, in the same road of the hotel, there's a small office and a, splat, a workshop where they do chalk, uh, like bas reliefs. This actually creates a signal where you know that there you need to put the bed. And that actually gives like a glamorous touch, but it allows you to understand rapidly where how the orientation of the room is made. And then the room is um, the bathroom, or the door of the bathroom is a secret door because uh, we do not want to show the bathroom because it's super cool because there's a jacuzzi area we know it's a bathroom which is super simple and we leave this as an intimate part of the hotel this is the uh, like the sort of um, lobby area there's a mixture of different kinds of sofa it's um, a hotel for young people where you, know, you can de definitely mix and it's a free space. Each and every one chooses the, the sofa they're more comfortable with which and then you can have some like, fun time all together. Small little terrace of the landscape of the city, some um, like breakfast uh, room. And the idea is basically that uh, going, uh, I don't know, to your um, Granny's house and house, and you go there and you arrive there, and you see some details that you remember that you're in a particular city with a culture which is not exactly yours, but it's pretty clean to make you feel comfortable and at home. This is a rather a collection that we've designed for this art gallery in Rome called Secondo Man. It's a, a publisher as well. It's not only gallery, but it's also an a, a, a publisher. Well, we take a shape of um, the, the dome uh, of uh, it's to protect ancient objects or to uh, I don't know to grow legumes in the garden or to put antique objects uh, or things like that. It's like this dome right here. Each uh, a person of the equip of Fabrica would use this shape, pretty pure. The briefing was that of adding piece to it, which creates a narration. Well, this was uh, done by an American half Chinese. The dome, the glass dome, makes him go around with a bicycle. Well, this other one pl uh, played with the fragility of glass. Another girl did this. She put a hole, poked the hole, and then uh, create, putting this rope, which is a pretty uh, rough material, and, and the glass is very. Uh, it looks like a bell. This other idea, uh, we left uh, air uh, out with a chimney. This other created an animal's head. This looked like a bottle of water, like a big tank. So you can open it up just like as if it's like a, a big bottle. And then there's this who played on the idea of um, like a balloon. This is the logo of um, the collection. And then we've uh, displayed it at the Sanatomica and in some other places in different museums. This is another project, a bit bold, that I've done for Louis Vuitton uh, during uh, a, a period where I've done a series of several collaborations with them, among them its store windows. Louis Vuitton, for its uh, anniversary, they have invented five designers to uh, design their Galeria Lafayette's uh, store windows and redesign them and each and every one of us had three store windows to talk about a piece of the background and the heritage of Louis Vuitton and, and do a celebration to Louis Vuitton. So I asked myself, how could I do that? Well, I have done a small research on Louis Vuitton and the strength of this trademark and of Louis Vuitton. Well, he also comes from 
my same country and I'm very happy about this and it's in the uh, mountains close to Switzerland and uh, he is a man who was looking for work he went to Paris and uh, cleaning uh, he was like uh, he cleaned chimneys and uh, uh, his uh, uh, like genius idea was that that all the luggage of people were all made of half moon and he said well okay why then don't i do luggage that are squared or at least like a like a trunk because when you have a half moon luggage you can't put some one over the other right you can't pile them up because they fall rather if you do them squared or rectangular well then you can do like a whole wall of luggage right and you can pile them up on a car or it's this is an observation which is super simple but he's a genius and this was the key of his great success then he came into Paris and uh, he learned to uh, without uh, doing anything all of a sudden he started doing his squared luggage so I thought well this guy has observed cars what is the first car that uh, carried his first luggage it's this one we see right here and then on the other three store windows, I've uh, done a, like a uh, carriage with horse, and then I've done Lamborghini which is the one of the contemporary customers of Louis Vuitton. To say that the Louis Vuitton and the genius idea of Louis Vuitton is being modern uh, on how to carry your personal objects uh, with you and your car. And this car is the symbol of the beginning of uh, cars, automobiles, then it was the carriage uh, with horses, and plus cars like nowadays, like Lamborghini. And to put all this together, I've created these stars made up with all the logos, uh, with uh, four different uh, logos, right? Creating like a constellation uh, of the story of Louis Vuitton and the, the heritage through this anniversary, there is a continuity thanks to an invention which is pretty simple. This is a project that we've done with Fabrica uh, for the Guggenheim Museum in Venice, uh, which was celebrating the 40 years of. Peggy Guggenheim in Venice. Well, Peggy Guggenheim is this lady totally out of the rules. Basically, she never follows what she's told. She's rich, she's a collector, she collects men, drugs, and party animal, basically. And she kept on saying that every day has to be one, every day has to be different from another. And she said that every day she wanted to, at the end of her life, purchase a piece of art so we thought okay so we need to design a small collection of objects to sell in the museum store rather than doing the exact same things with the logo of the museum let's try to tell the story of this crazy lady so we took all the books and understood exactly uh, how she could be different from all the others and we have demonstrated that through the collection you understand the difference we have printed the objects in four colors quadrichromia like uh, serigraphy and uh, every uh, notebook is different because when they print blue you have let's say all these and then when you apply the red i asked the printer to move it a bit so every time every image is different so you can't move them always in the same way so basically when the colors go through these images they they always move them green so all these notebooks were all different one from the other just like the days of her life right all these notebooks were uh, done in limited edition because it was uh, for a celebration and we numbered them just like limited editions should be numbered they are all different just like her days well um, 
among uh, the strange moments that she lives in. When there was the war, she uh, escaped to the States. So since she uh, was Jewish, with the German, that every time are coming closer and closer where she lives, uh, she escapes to the States. To leave, one of her lovers, called Max Ernst, gave her a present. She put all her art pieces in the um, security safeties of uh, the embassy. And then she was super sad without her art pieces, though. She left them in the safeties, right? And uh, um, her lover did some miniatures of her art pieces, and she left to the States with this luggage with the miniatures that her boyfriend and lover gave her. And this detail of a man who's madly in love with her and... Uh, this is a unique piece, and we've uh, recuperated this idea to do a line of handbags. When you open this handbag, you see a picture of Peggy, Peggy Guggenheim. You can travel with her, basically, using this secret part, a bit intimate. And it's accessible to people who purchase this object. And then, one of her particularities is that in Venice, she had her um, gondola with her own gondoliere, the, the man who like, guides the gondola. And we found a picture uh, of the gondola and the man, and we printed that because he was the one carrying her luggages. Every time she traveled and she went around uh, from parties and everything, there was always this man carrying her around. And then she uh, sent a lot of letters, a lot of love letters, um, requests to the various ambassadors for some special services to pr protect her artists and her friends. And she wrote a lot of letters, uh, unofficial, the secret ones that no one should really understand and see and read. Well, we've done a ceramic box that looks like a uh, typewriter with inside of uh, her own picture to put uh, our secret papers, documents. Well, we don't really write letters. You can print an email and put it in there because we all should have like a secret uh, letter or secret uh, documents and so she's uh, madly in love with dogs she's had 12 dogs and they're all they're buried in venice one of her dogs was called like her daughter when she'd call the daughter she'd call the the dog basically and vice versa so every time she had a bit of confusion same thing when she'd call her um uh, Chief sale, I called the dog, and so they always have the same names. This demonstrates that this lady is crazy. So she'd call dogs people's name and people who were very close to her. And every time you go and see her museum, there's 12 dead dogs there buried. And she's madly in love with dogs, and therefore we've done these dog holes and uh, pet holes. This is a sofa with a couch that I've designed for Casamania, where there are five different designers, uh, which is a very interesting trademark for me. It plays on diversities. We are super different one from the other without naming uh, anyone. We have some very different tastes and we have some products that other people do for Cosmonia that I don't really like and when they called me I'm like shit well I don't know if you've really understood what my job is because close to Fabio November I feel it's pretty strange um, not to mention anyone but we don't have the same language basically and I hope so He's a very nice person, but in terms of design, uh, we're different culture. I'm French and he's Italian. Don't film all this, please. Sorry, no, I just needed to say it. Well, I need to be French when I work for them because I'm the more Baroque who does some things which are more like softer. 
more romantic. Rather the other do some other things. So one, we've started with a small collection three years ago with the stool, with the, a drawer with some um, drawers, covered with small drawers made of uh, wood. Uh, which represents um, the entire culture of uh, uh, an antique Louis XV, Louis Philippe, very Baroque, very decorated, which is our like poetic side. Very decorative. Uh, there is a leg of a table could be a simple tube, and in France we always do them all curvy, and we think it's more cool. Oh, I don't know, softer, more historical, uh, with a bit more charge to them. Like, so I've done this sofa, which is made of fabric and leather, and it has some wood, wood uh, in terms of the cartonne buttons and the legs of the sofa. The leather is a way of um, designing something which is, how can we say, like standing. And it's a bit of a vintage, mixed with a very rich fabric made of two different um, threads, a gray a one and lighter one. Everything is all done type of futon. And these colors are uh, combined together, but at the same time, they create like a, a tension between one being leather darker and the other is fabric and uh, it's softer. And on the armchair, it's the same thing with the different tone of colors. We've done this in five different colors. Uh, one, it's a bit green, brownish, one which is beige, white, one is more orange, greenish, um, like military colors, um, like camouflage colors, and uh, it's like a whole line of products which creates uh, um, and gives a possibility to the marketing and the sales to eventually sell uh, a range of products and create a, a range of products in the catalog. Because on one side, definitely the brand has to work with three or four materials, but um, they have to earn something with this effort and therefore I'm giving them the possibility of selling more sofas because there's a greater range playing on different colors and different textures. This, um, this is one of the first collaborations we've done with Second Man which is always that art gallery and uh, publisher in Rome. And they asked me to design a collection of objects. This glass is made in silicated glass, which is this glass tube, made like preformed, and that makes them um, very incredible things because you can create some 90 degrees angles that usually with normal glass you may not do that because it has a resistance which is pretty limited and blown glass classic uh, you do shapes as round as possible in order not to create a, like a, a break. well this actually allows you to do some very geometric shapes which allowed me to do this object which is like a basket um, and uh, this glass has the capacity of uh, creating two shapes and putting them together, binding them together. And I did a, 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 a tray and a handle. When you have the possibility of doing these things, which are a bit different, you are playing exactly the opposite. And we go pretty crazy doing these Baroque shapes when normally with normal glass, you may not do this. So this collection is a game between two different styles, totally opposite, which um, are a celebration of this particular piece. This collection is a collection that we've done with Zanotta. It's called Transforma. Why? Because the project with Zanotta has been that of taking the catalog of Zanotta, which is this Italian brand 
very famous, that all the most famous designers in the world, like Brioni, Zanuso, and all these the great, uh oh. Like um, a, a staff, a very young uh, um, group. Well, they were super happy to. Oh, oh, the batteries. And do what we want. And the super brave and the part of Zanata saying, hey, take my catalog and make some new proposals, use my furniture as a base and transform them. This is why it's called transform. And our idea was that of saying, well, we have to recognize the trademarks of the past and where the piece comes from. There is, for example, this piece made of... Uh, which uses a collection of Zanata, which is very famous, called Servamoto, which is a collection which is very simple. It has a base, which is a half moon, with a handle, and on the handle. Zanata allows you to place a book because there's a metal sheet uh, binded to it. Two. Security type things and many other versions. And she took this to put a series of different uh, objects that look like a sculpture. It's not an object which is practical, but it's actually a sculpture, an object which is not uh, so useful. But another person took this table, Castiglione di Mamo of Super Studios, the Quaderna, and it's done by Quaderna, which is squares. It's a serigraphy on laminated. I, I, you always need a journalist that corrects you. But okay, so, well, this made us think of the mosaics of uh, uh, the gem. And this becomes like a shadow. This was uh, transformed like a ghost. Fantasmi. It's, um, this is a chair of a tractor, which is usually on the opposite. It's three feet with a chair. Using this structure, putting three chairs allows to create a conversation. This table, which is a table that normally has these legs uh, made shown in profile, so when you see the table from up above, it looks like a normal table, because you see a rectangle like a redwood. Rather, the special aspect of this table is what you see underneath. These legs that have the profile, so the the designer thought of all the things you could actually do under the table, the kid who plays, the, the I don't know, like a trash can, um, a lady who's looking for something, and many other things. This very famous couch that if you turn it around, it looks like an animal, like with a bit of graphics. It's a bit easier to understand that it's an animal. But this sofa, which is a very basic sofa, very simple of Zanata, which is uh, uh, customized as a Chesterfield, but a sick one, because the buttons are like some the buttons are like, okay, uh, pimples. These um, two pieces that we do not see here, printed on the weight, you can do some gymnastics rather than uh, smoking. Well, this is transformed uh, like a shower. So when uh, accumulating some other discs, uh, it gives it another function. This table of the same uh, made of the different squares that if you actually print or decorate some of these uh, uh, squares, it's a picnic table. <laughs> this, which is usually a bench that is very simple, that with some special materials allows you to write some messages, like the benches in the 
park. The benches in the park where they leave messages on them. This famous saddle was designed in the past in Italy. No one would steal bicycles because everyone would go around with bicycles. Now, if you leave your bicycle in the street, well, without a lock or a chain, it's all we've done a leather chain for this. This is a project done for Marché. Marché is this very big uh, um, store in Paris that sells a bit of everything, and it's uh, it has an entire floor dedicated to the an entire floor dedicated to household appliances, and therefore they asked us to redesign that entire floor. That entire floor is. Um, designed by five areas, one dedicated to tables, one dedicated to uh, sheets, another dedicated to chairs, another to furniture in general, um, and the other books, um, notebooks and stuff, the stationary engine, and another one. There are seven areas, so we decided to design an object per area, also lamps, which allows to show a bit of freshness uh, um, of an old house that tries to be a bit younger. These are the store windows. Every store window will tell the story and how you open a box with the new projects. This we designed for the corner of chairs. It's a color with Tony, we customize the chair. Each and every one has created a story with the chair. This is the graphics of the entire communication. Some odd objects like uh, towels and sheets were printed like this with this embroidery of uh, these patterns to create a film with the entire collection. And our intention was actually that of creating a research through the entire floor where people could actually go and discover the new pieces and how it was renewed. We have also used, in terms of graphics that you have just seen, these shapes which are a bit baroque, more geometric, because the cool aspect of this space is that the, the, the ceilings are all made of glass and they've been conserved or recreated uh, as they were in the past. This is a very Parisian aspect and how it was done in the, the beginning of the century. A series of chairs, a small table, a pillow, and so on. This is a collaboration between the interactive department of Fabrica with mine of object design, of product design. One of the pieces we have designed for this ex uh, exhibition at Victor Norbert Museum, it was uh, dedicated to interactive design. One was called, uh, the, one of the two pieces we've designed, it was Venetian Mirror, because the Department of Interactivity of Fabrica had created this software that when there is a screen, you place yourself just in front of it, and the screen starts uh, uh, showing like a, a screen paper that becomes like a mirror and all of a sudden you disappear. That's the idea of representing a different time, like it goes rather than going one, two, three, and on the other side it lasts a lifetime longer. It's a way of changing time. It's asking people to see things and technologies in a slower time, more poetic way, rather than going super speed and super consumption. So um, they've designed the software, but just like almost every interactive designer, they do not know how to give a shape to this, and therefore they asked us to do a collaboration. And uh, we said, let's do a contrast between a normal mirror that you see on the frame and the interactive frame 
curtain and a mirror of tomorrow and to recall uh, uh, Benito and Fabrica where do they do these Venetian mirrors all made of small little pieces of uh, uh, mirrors therefore they do like a, like a collage of small which create this dimension which is um, like three dimensions very different so we've used this technique of doing uh, uh, Venetian mirrors but the mirrors on the side are made of pieces of mirror as it's as if the new mirror was substituting the old mirror and it was all creating an entire piece the old is a frame the modern is the center and you can see yourself with this contrast Then another project made by with the Department of, Inter, uh, of like, uh, Interaction Design of the Fabrica. For the Design Week, we've done a store window. The idea was that of presenting the work of uh, product design and softwares. And we have Collect is a store which is always uh, the coolest. Uh, well, we thought, let's take some projects that for us uh, have been pretty essential like the telephone the radio and the VHS um, well now you don't even hear of these now people have iPods, mobile phones CDs and these objects uh, to me are part of my life VHS when I was 14 years old you'd call with the, uh, like a phone at home you didn't have a mobile and now many people don't even have a fixed phone right and so we said well okay let's celebrate these old products and make them do an in ceramics just like when the queen dies you do a bust in ceramics right and so you do that so didn't take pictures right at the time you'd call a sculptor or a painter immediately you had to do a representation of that person when they she died and the fact of doing this in ceramic gives it a value which is pretty different and it gives them a side of fragility and the product nowadays it's contemporary but tomorrow it's already dead so also on the department of interactivity we work together to do this that um, when you get close to the store window it would like shoot a, um, a picture you were frozen there on the monitor so it was you looking at the store window it was part of the entire effect and you were basically there after three seconds it just shoot another picture and it would take all these pictures and it's fun how to think on looking at a store window the person was that of stopping there are three minutes the objective of a store window you have a person stay there for at least three minutes right and enter and, and buy so the way was okay come in and see you're part of the game you're already part of the family so come in and buy so they're proposing some new experiences and our idea was that of using these industrial shelves because um, it was the fact of consumption and production and what you produce and do more in a store where you usually have uh, contrast with the, they're the coolest because it's a unique piece rather we were going there with the mini like industry of all these pieces that you'd find so many of them. Well, this is the last one. It's a project for Vista Alegre. It's a ex in the royal fabric of Portugal. They are 200 years old, and I work for them almost every year. And they've asked me to do a collection and since Portugal the idea of purchasing a porcelain uh, like a, 
collection to me is very strange. I mean, you buy 56 plates when now your house allows you to have 24 plates or whatever. I mean, or else you have a gigantic house. But besides that, they continue doing these things like super traditional. So I thought, well, a plate is uh, also a way of proposing a decoration a graphic solution. My idea was that of saying, how do I do the link between this that has 200 years and it was an industry for all the royal families of Portugal and a new couple nowadays who lives in, in a white cube because nowadays a dark, uh, like apartments are not white cubes. So my idea was that of recuperating the, the industry, it was a humongous industry like many years ago, where the director was there in his uh, building, and there was, there's a church for the people who work in there. So it's like a small little city, the industry is like, because obviously the people who work in here, you do the weddings, there's a theater, so it's like a small little city, the system which is very um, like family run and uh, the way of giving work to people at the beginning of the century. And in the super decorated area there was, uh, so I said let's take all these symbols and signals which are pretty ancient and traditional memories of the past and how one would live and let's just place them in, uh, on our plates. <laughs> <laughs> we recuperated these drawings and uh, we have applied these uh, things to a special technique that Vista Lega is capable of doing, which is the calc. It's called white on white because the drawing is printed with a paint that when it goes into the um, oven, it creates a volume, a chemical reaction in a small little volume. And usually, usually you apply it on the porcelain and it's flat. But this rather, with this special particular product, it creates a bit of volume. And it uh, recalls all these decorations of ancient uh, roofs. And uh, it's not a lot of flowers and colors. Also, Vista Alegre can do some things like that, obviously. But here, the decoration, super soft, super light, white on white. And uh, when you like touch and like eat on this, you left a bit of souvenir of uh, what this Vista Alegre heritage. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, you were very clear and you made us see some, uh, actually all of the aspects of his work with some products. Well, first of all, just if there are some questions, since we do not have a lot of time available, Let's use it. Students. Project, or you propose to submit a personal project, 
I need to finish my finish first that is uh, good to research on, then we may get some questions about this one. Like you to explain because sometimes it's not so clear what an art director does. So, and I said that what you do is also art direction. Someone says, "What what is an art director?" And I gave my answer, but maybe you can give a clear answer to that. Well, the work of an art director, according to my opinion, is that of putting together people who all together create an additional value for the trademark for the people who work uh, all together. So the idea is that thanks to different talents, one can actually write a story. So it's this capacity of finding the right people, propose a list of projects, and each and every one expresses his own capacities. And you create like a small story. Like Cristina Morozzi uh, has even more experience in that field. But the idea is basically it's exactly that. In the sense that an idea would be capable of giving space to the other people either, to write that story that uh, we believe is correct, right? Yes? No? <laughs> Probably it's also interesting for students to understand the relationship with these young creatives, um, young designers, maybe it's not a correct term. Well, you need to um, cool them down in the sense that they're too creative sometimes. When you meet them the first time, how are they? Well, I usually leave. I don't want to see them as soon as they come in. Oh, well, no. Um, well, the, the real beginning, uh, I have chosen them and therefore normally Sometimes we have some surprises, but normally we're pretty lined up on the vision of design. What I like between young creatives is to find people who have a point of view. It's not the talent in terms of being capable of drawing well, but it's more an idea of having a personal expression. Because many designers um, exist nowadays, but the new ones who have something to say are the ones I like, actually. It's not that I'm asking a technical service, but I want a point of view on the future. And the relationship with the brand, because sometimes you dialogue with these very important brands with the heritage, and therefore it's uh, hard to eventually uh, work in their communication or no actually it's not um, because it's, one needs to have the capacity of um, um, having an open mind a designer is not only the one who comes in and just signs uh, his base his table and his and uh, he's also the, the one who can listen to people open up and uh, have an open mind and understand the heritage of the brand and what kind of future they want. It's a way of observing, observing the DNA of a, a brand and uh, uh, like uh, understanding it, elaborating it and giving a new point of view of what you understood. It's an exercise of uh, having uh, enough uh, uh, you need to be stronger in the sense that if you have the background to the culture of a brand, then actually being a nominee that comes from the, 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 the that has no relationship with the brand. It's a service that you're offering. The designer uh, offers a service, so you need to understand for which brand you're, in, you're working for and what could be the service that you're giving. What is the advantage that your project is giving to the brand itself? To understand the advantage, you need to understand the problems. 
It could be clear because the briefing is well done. Or else you need to have a culture of the brand and it's always important to be sure that a luxury brand asks for something. And um, you cannot have something made of recuperated plastic in Brazil in a favela, okay? At least a bit of um, capacity of putting together things at the same level. I don't want to ask a different, a difficult question, but what is your relationship with decoration? Compared to the theme of decoration that normally in a design is very used, what do you think? What type of decoration? From what did it derive? Applied art for craft in general, for material, you know, porcelain and glass, right? You use these a lot. Well, it comes from my culture when I was in school, because when I was in school, there was the fashion of minimalism, the trend as clean as possible. And obviously, since I'm very French, I just go the opposite. I want to break the balls to everyone. I want to nag, basically, he said. And uh, um, if someone goes on super minimal, maybe I can find a different way. So I go to super decorative, um, all Memphis, all these things, because they were something that was a reaction to what was done at that time. And therefore, I, I want to go out of standards, out of the schemes. Uh, I don't want to follow the same train and follow the same direction other people. Oh, that's my, per I don't know, the, the, the curtains of my granny with all these flowers rather than the ones all totally white. Well, besides my personal taste, well, I believe that uh, the French culture of the decorator, uh, it's very French. A designer in France, uh, before being called a design, which is uh, an English word, it was the decorator. The decorator was um, the person who'd put together things to create a lifestyle. And so, well, one of the possibilities of being a designer is exactly doing that. So, rather than saying, I'm a designer, I've invented the round table, let's probably then uh, understand where I come from and say, okay, I'm a designer with a culture of a decorator, which was what we used to do. It's not like in Italy that a designer uh, was born much earlier. Well, people would go to France and visit an old furniture museum. And in Italy, they were pretty new at that time after the war, right? So when someone would do metal lacquer for cards, they started doing lacquer chair. Right there in France, they kept on doing the copies of Louis XVI. And this is a fact that, to me, it's much better than, uh, you know, having just a humor. That's it. We can laugh uh, better. Okay. I'm finished. Are there some other questions?